From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Protests, even peaceful ones, can be very dangerous things. A large group of agitated people can be a lot like a can of gas waiting for a match. Once the mob mentality takes over, a protest can easily sour, turning into a riot or an all-out battle between civilians and authorities. And it isn't always so simple. Consider the 2007 Union protest in Quebec. Peaceful protesters from the Communications, Energy and Paperworkers Union of Canada found three aggressive, masked strangers in their midst. Protest leader David Coles told the men they were violent and not welcome. With uniformed police standing nearby, Coles accused these masked men of stirring up trouble in hopes of starting a riot and giving the police an excuse to crack down. He called these men agent provocateurs, meaning they were working for the police to turn the protest violent. Why would police want to endanger the people they swore to protect? And would they really do this? Here's where it gets crazy. The short answer is yes, but it's tough to find hard proof. Agent provocateurs aren't a new phenomenon. The United States has a troubling history with this strategy. During COINTELPRO operations, the FBI sent agent provocateurs to Vietnam War protests. They also infiltrated several organizations, and not just hate groups like the Ku Klux Klan. The students for a democratic society likely found themselves saddled with agent provocateurs at protests, as did the National Lawyers Guild and the NAACP. There's a line between an undercover agent and an agent provocateur. With the growth of the Occupy protest and the Arab Spring, reports of these agents are on the rise. Consider the Black Bloc, alleged anarchists who seem bent on causing property damage at Occupy protests. Rumors have swirled around the Bloc, with some arguing that these individuals are simply misdirected and others alleging that they're working with police. There are other, more recent reports of this tactic. In 2011, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker received a prank call from someone pretending to be billionaire David Koch. The two discussed the idea of planting troublemakers in an upcoming protest, although he ultimately rejected the notion. In Kuala Lumpur, protesters raised concerns that strangers who tried to turn a sit-in into a riot may have been sent by the opposition. During the uprisings in Libya, Syria, and Egypt, protesters claimed that agent provocateurs were out in full force. But, again, it's tough to prove these stories. First, it seems like an easy out for civilians who want to blame the actions of bad protesters on authorities. Second, no authority wants to admit to using this trick, and agents could put their lives in danger by admitting their involvement. But some have come forward. Patrick Howley admitted to acting as an agent provocateur in an article for the American Standard. Agent provocateurs are not a conspiracy theory. Remember those three masked men at the Quebec protest we mentioned earlier? After several denials, the authorities finally admitted the truth. Those three masked men were indeed undercover police. Where does this leave us? While it's almost certain that reports of agent provocateurs may be exaggerated, it's equally certain that governments across the world have used this tactic. But who? That's something they don't want you to know. What happens when a government takes deception one step further, skipping fake protesters and creating entire fake events, attacks, and crimes? Tune in next week for part two of our series, False Flags.